stream. <clears throat> so if you are joining us from home this morning, welcome to Peoples. I hope you'll be an active participant and you'll find uh, words for music and uh, readings and prayers on screen. So if you happen to have a candle handy, I might invite you to light it now as I light mine. The tomb could not put out the light of Christ. So we have another uh, weird interactive uh, opening prayer this morning, loosely based on Psalm 148. So um, there, there's a whole lot of animals in the world that cover the entire alphabet. So I thought we would go through the alphabet and uh, say that, you know, uh, call upon the, those animals to join us in praising the Lord. So for A, we have the axolotl, which is this really cute little lizard looking thing. What axolotls praise the Lord? What's an animal that starts with B? Bunnies. bunnies. Let bunnies praise the Lord. That's a good one. What's an animal that starts with C? Let cats praise the Lord. Well, cats aren't going to pray. Cats are pagan. They remember when we worship them as gods in Egypt. And they're not forgetting this. Oh, let's see. Uh, maybe uh, corgis praise the Lord. That seems more likely. What starts with D? Dinosaurs. Let dinosaurs praise the Lord. <laughs> what starts with E? Let elephants praise the Lord. What about F? Let foxes praise the Lord. Also flying squirrels because they're adorable and I love them. What starts with G? Let what? Oh, let giraffes and gnats praise the Lord. Well, that's a good one. I didn't include any bugs on my list because they're creepy. Uh, what starts with H? Let hippopotamuses praise the Lord. And also hedgehogs because they're really cute. It starts with I. Let iguanas praise the Lord. And also the immortal jellyfish, which you'll need to Google this week. They're literally immortal. It's it's wild. What starts with J? Jaguars. Let jaguars praise the Lord. What about K? Kangaroos. Let kangaroos praise the Lord and also kiwi birds. What about L? Let yamas praise the Lord and, and lemurs. They're, they have spray TV tails. What about M? Let moose praise the Lord. And monarch butterflies, that's the one bug that I have on my list. What about N? Oh, let nightingales praise the Lord. And narwhals, because they're real life unicorns of the sea. And Norwegian forest cats. What about O? Oh, let the octopus praise the Lord. And it's very debated plural, whether it's octopods or octopuses or octopi. Apparently, depending on what like language route you go, what people get into serious fights about this. And also otters. What about P? Porpoise. Oh, let porpoises praise the Lord. And piranhas. <laughs> what about Q? Kiwi. Kiwi. <laughs> let Quetzals praise the Lord. And also quails and K-hogs and most of all, quokkas, which you should also look up this week. They're, they're these little, I think they're like related to kangaroos and they're like cat sized and they smile and they will photo bomb photos that, that tourists are taking and they're really, really cute. I wanna meet one. What starts with R? Let rabbits and rats praise the Lord. And red pandas, they, they match my natural hair color, so we've got an affinity. What starts with S? Yeah, let, let, let snakes and sheep praise the Lord, especially Doug the weird sheep. And starfish. What starts with T? Let turtles praise the Lord. And teddy bear hamsters and tapers. What starts with U?
let unicorns praise the Lord because there are unicorns in the Bible. Gosh darn it. In the King James translation exclusively. But also wakaris, which are a monkey with a very red face, and uguisas, which are this tiny little very cute Asian songbird, and umbrella birds, and unau, which are two-toed sloth. And yeah, there was a lot of Googling to come up with this list because I didn't think people would have you animals. What starts with a V? Oh, let voles praise the Lord. Man, I really should have thought of that before looking up like Vicuña and Vampire Bat and mm, Venus Flytrap and Vulture. Voles. That was the obvious one. What about W? Whales. Let whales praise the Lord. Here's that. And wolves, yes. I put down wolverines. Hugh Jackman, let Hugh Jackman praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, for X, I won't put you on the spot, but the Xanthopes shrew. Let the Xanthopes shrew praise the Lord. This tiny little African cutie with this very pointed nose. It's, it's like a, it's, yeah, it's very cute. And the Xeris is an unstriped ground squirrel of northern Africa and the a uh, Jolotes Quintly dog, which is a Mexican hairless dog, and I really had to look up the pronunciation on that one because it starts with an X. Uh, what about Y? Yeah. Let yaks praise the Lord, as well as the Yakutian Leica dog, who is a super floofy dog that herds reindeer. In, uh, and Z. Let zebras praise the Lord alongside the zigzag salamander. <laughs> Let all creatures and all peoples praise the Lord. Amen. Family of faith, in the season of Easter, we take a moment to praise God instead of offering our confessions because God is always willing to help us grow new life out of the cold ground. Please join with me in our unison prayer of praise, followed by a time for silent personal thanksgiving. Let us pray. In the midst of darkness and chaos, God imagined. In the fury and darkness, God imagined a world filled with trees and blue skies and fluffy white clouds. Alleluia. In the meadow, God stood and imagined foxes bluebirds, and slithering salamanders. In a world of rainstorms and wildlife and cattle and grasses blowing in the breeze, God imagined humanity. Alleluia. In a world teeming with billions of people, God imagined us. We are created in the image of God. God imagined us all. God loves each of us. Alleluia. Amen. I am thankful for all of you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please pray with me. Gracious God, your, world is a, your word is a living word. By your spirit, awaken us, that we may see and hear your presence in the world and in the scripture that we read today. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our brother and guide. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, 
peace be with you. As God has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. So, fun fact, because I'm full of those. This past Thursday was the 96th birthday of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. You are perhaps more likely to know, or let's all be honest here, more likely to care, because you're not me, that the next day, April 22nd, uh, was the 52nd celebration of Earth Day, which is why I am wearing my Earth earrings today. Yesterday, April 23rd, was the feast day of St. George, who is the patron saint of England. And today, the second Sunday in the season of Easter, the traditional gospel reading is the story of Doubting Thomas that Sarah just read for us. As a bonus calendar fun fact, today is Easter in the Eastern Orthodox Church because they have a different calendar than the Western Church, uh, which always schedules Easter on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox, which is weirdly specific, and I don't know why we do it that way. Don't, I don't even, I don't know. Anyway, the Queen's birthday, Earth Day, St. George, and Doubting Thomas. Do I mention these four dates because I'm about to tie them all together? That was a rhetorical question. Of course I'm about to tie them all together. Our second reading this morning comes to us from Psalm 148. Hear now the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, all the angels. Praise God, all the host. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise God, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God commanded and they were created. God established them forever and ever and fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling God's command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animal and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God's name alone is exalted. God's glory is above heaven and earth. The Lord has raised up a horn for the people, praise for all the faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to God. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. There are sea monsters in the Bible. <laughs> Unicorns, too, for that matter, and great beasts. The King James Version of the Bible translates this psalm as having dragons praising God, which is why I read Dragons Love Tacos. For some reason, the New Revised Standard Version that we usually read toned down dragons to sea monsters because like the translators have no sense of fun or whimsy. Um, 
But I love this image of absolutely all of creation praising God, not just the humans, but all the animals too. Domesticated animals, wild animals, friendly animals like dogs and quokkas, roof-destroying jerk animals like raccoons, even big strange creatures that may or may not even be real like dragons. Dragons are often a metaphor for the strange and dangerous aspects of the world that we don't quite believe. Anyway, in honor of Her Majesty's birthday, I thought I would share a very English story. Once upon a time, in a faraway kingdom, there was a fierce and terrifying dragon. The people of this kingdom knew that if the dragon was not fed two sheep every day, it would attack them and burn down their villages. But they didn't have enough resources to feed the dragon two sheep every day. So with a heavy heart, the king decided that he would have to sacrifice people to save his kingdom. It was impossible to appease this dragon and impossible to fight it. The king had a daughter and she was very brave and very beautiful and had a very sparkly tea her. I, I was elected homecoming princess in high school and this was my tea. <laughs> she volunteered to be the first dragon sacrifice so that she could show the people of the kingdom that even the royal family was willing to pay the price to protect the kingdom from the dragon's destruction. She was very scared that it was going to hurt but being brave doesn't mean that you aren't scared. Being brave means that you're willing to do something even though you're scared, especially if you know that you can help someone else by doing it. Sir George the, the Knight happened to be passing through this kingdom on the day the princess was to be fed to the dragon. He saw the princess traveling alone and he saw that she looked very sad. So being a knight, he offered to accompany her to her destination, and she told him the story of the insatiable dragon. George didn't think it was right that such a brave princess should be eaten by a dragon instead of helping lead her people. He offered to face the dragon with her and kill it if he could. He knew that God was with him. So Sir George the knight stood in front of the fierce and terrifying people-eating dragon. The dragon was very strong, but George drew first blood with his sword because, of course, I have a prop for this. <laughs> I've had her for like 20 years. Her name is Romonia, which means noise of a gathering storm in Quenya, which is Elvish and Tolkien, and I should maybe not reveal how much of a nerd I am. Uh, <laughs> George drew first blood with his sword, but the dragon hit back and cut George's arm with his talon. The dragon was very strong and started laughing at this puny human who thought he could take on a dragon. George shouted at the princess, who took off her belt and tied a rope to it and dropped it onto the dragon's neck. Together, they had done an impossible thing and defeated the dragon, which meant that the brave princess was safe. George and the princess returned to the castle with the dragon on a leash, and all the people were so inspired by George's faith and by his willingness to help strangers that the whole kingdom converted to Christianity. They saw that through God, George had done an impossible thing. The God who gave George the strength and courage to face down a dragon to help others was the God that this kingdom wanted on its side. When George died, he was canonized and made the patron saint of England. The kingdom was never scared of dragons again, and they all lived happily ever after. The end. What do we do when we're faced with something impossible? Do we laugh at the idea of undiscovered dragons splashing around in the deep ocean? Do we give in to a hopeless situation as bravely as we can and send not only our sheep but our daughters off to die? Do we brush off the things we don't understand as not true or just not even important? Do we come up with our own explanations that seem more likely to us? Do we ignore it and assume that someone else will figure out what it's supposed to mean, maybe, hopefully? 
Do we stand our ground and insist that the impossible thing is not happening, even when we can see it happening before our eyes, even when the impossible thing is changing the entire world around us? I'm talking about Jesus. St. George really is the patron saint of England, but he probably didn't actually defeat a dragon or convert an entire kingdom. The story is an allegory, unfortunately. The dragon is sin and death, which Jesus defeated on our behalf, not just on behalf of brave princesses, on behalf of all humankind. He didn't defeat death with a sword or a belt, but by dying for us, like the princess was willing to do for her people. Jesus is an impossible thing. His birth was impossible. His miracles were impossible. His resurrection was impossible. And I don't think any of us can blame Thomas in the slightest for struggling to believe that Jesus was back from the dead. What do we do when we're faced with the impossibilities of Jesus? When we embrace the impossible, everything changes. Jesus is born and peace becomes possible. Jesus rises from the grave and gives us the chance to be reborn into a whole new world. St. George and a very brave princess face a dragon against all odds and save the day. If we're being honest with ourselves, though, most of that sounds ridiculous. Peace is a nice idea, but we know what's going on in Ukraine, and it can be hard to feel really optimistic. You're all being very sweet to humor a weird Anglophile with her dragon stories and props and excitement about the Queen's birthday, but I'm pretty sure you think it's all a bit silly and probably would have even without the props. But like, we live on a planet with fireflies and giraffes and rocks that glow in the dark and weird four inch long crustaceans that can boil water and see four times as many colors as humans can and jellyfish that are literally immortal. And oh my gosh, have you ever seen a picture of a star nosed vole? or a Venezuelan poodle moth, or the deep sea nightmare that is the anglerfish. Though they are nightmares. Duck-billed platypuses are so weird that people literally used to think they were as fake as mermaids, which, eh, yeah, fair. The Greek word for seahorse literally means sea monster horse. Also, there is a cat who lives in my house and likes to steal limes, which is almost equally as weird, really. God created an incredible world, and we will never see or comprehend or even be remotely aware of most of it. Every day, science discovers amazing new things that we might very well have thought were ridiculous and fantastical just a few generations ago. Honestly, who are any of us to say that dragons are definitively the stuff of legends? There could be just about anything lurking at the bottom of the ocean. Like, probably not dragons, but really, who knows? If Jesus can rise from the dead, are dragons really all that weird in comparison? At creation, God proclaimed the earth and all the plants and animals and people within it to be good and appointed us to be stewards over it all. We are called to love the world that God loves and to take care of it to the best of our ability. It's a monumental task because the world is monumentally diverse and complex. How could we look at it and not be in awe? God has given us many amazing gifts, but each and every one of them touches this planet, God's first gift to us. God loves the earth, enough to share it with us, enough to give that earth God's own only son, enough to continue to speak to us and listen to us and answer our prayers. In our psalm this morning, the psalmist calls on all of creation to praise the Lord. We've already added a full alphabet's worth of animals to that psalm this morning, from aardvarks to zigzag salamanders and the xanthopes shrew in between. But I think that we can add a few more. The psalmist calls on kings of the earth to praise the Lord, but I know that Queen Elizabeth is a part of that choir. All those who love the earth and work to protect it, let them praise the Lord. 
all those who hear the story of St. George and the dragon, all people who claim them as their patron saint, including citizens of England, Ethiopia, and Georgia, the country, not the state, as well as Catalonia, Aragon, and Moscow, all people who remember his feast day. Let them praise the Lord. All those who hear the story of Thomas touching the scars on the hands of the resurrected Jesus and all who relate to his shock and doubt, let them praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all you peoples. Dragons might seem impossible, but I like to believe that they will get the last laugh someday. All kinds of creatures will rise up from the bottomless depths of the ocean and from the secret corners of the forests and from the tops of the mountains. Dragons will sing in harmony with Jesus to praise God, their creator, in a great, big, and incredibly weird choir with beetles and cows and clawed frogs and umbrella birds and water deer and otters and pterodactyls and Siberian huskies and beautiful little songbirds. What do you think that choir might sound like? Please pray with me. When we pray together, we multiply our joys and divide our sorrows. Holy One, Holy Three, Mother of all creation, yours is the womb of all life. Yours is the fountain of living water. Yours is the voice that breaks down walls. Yours is the love that cannot be contained. For the thirsty, you give the water of life. For the hungry, you offer the bread of heaven. 
For the weak, you carry heavy burdens. For the joyful, you shout in holy laughter. For the anxious, you summon showers of peace. For the suffering, you breathe sighs of comfort. As we pray for the new heaven and new earth, O God, we give thanks for this earth, our partner in your service. Move us to hear your voice in the song of the sparrow, to see your face reflected in the water. Awaken us to your greatness through the winds of the storm and the scent of your grace on the morning dew. Empower us to hear your prophets in the croaks of evening frogs, to read your gospel in the webs of writing spiders. Yours is the womb of all life, O God. Yours is the fountain of living water. Yours is the voice that breaks down walls. Yours is the love that cannot be contained. In your great mercy, you call us to care for your creation, to uphold one another, and to pray for your world. Hear our prayers for the healing of the earth, for clean water that all may drink, for the right use of resources and the careful tending of the land and the seas. For people in places damaged by war. For those who suffer, those whose needs are known to us, and those whose needs are known only to you. And especially this week for the friends and family of Bob Meyer. With confidence that you hear our prayers, we offer ourselves for your good purposes, watching and waiting for the healing of your creation as we work toward your coming reign. Through Christ our Savior, in the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and praise to you now and forever as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Humbled by God's diversity and generosity, let us offer our gifts to God and Christ's church. If you are able to, please place your offerings in the plates being passed. Alternatively, if you visit peoplespresbyterian.org, you'll find a donate button at the top of the page that will link you directly to a secure page where you can make a donation online. We appreciate the generosity of the people's family as we live out our faith in mission and ministry.
God, you meet our needs and transform us for service. Accept these gifts of, as signs of our gratitude and our commitment to witness to Christ's ministry in the world that you created and called good. Amen. Please join with me in reading our affirmation of faith. We believe in God the Creator, who created and is still creating everything. The universe, the world, the plants, the animals, and us. We believe in God the Christ, who saved and is still saving everything, and each of us, because we are unique, individual, and beloved of the Christ. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who guided and is still guiding everything, every atom and fiber and molecule of creation. We believe that this one God in three persons is present among us, striving to bring us back into harmony with all creation and with God, forgiving, healing, touching everyone, never rejecting any, who willingly receive this freely offered gift of love and grace and eternal life. Please be seated. So as you sit this morning and as you go out into the week and as you join us on the lawn for a uh, hot dog luncheon and egg hunt and uh, crafts and games and all sorts of fun things that Carol has planned for us, I encourage you to run an internet search for some of the world's weirdest animals and to take a moment to be in awe of all of the bizarre and creative diversity of it all. Especially look up quokkas if you're not familiar with quokkas, they are so cute. Also the Japanese flying dwarf squirrel. <laughs> and there's this frog in India that is purple and looks like it's on steroids, I'm not even kidding. Uh, God is truly an artist with a weird sense of humor. <laughs>
Friends, God loves you as fiercely as a dragon loves its horde. God loves, looks at you and thinks you are every bit as adorable as a Japanese flying dwarf squirrel, which is saying a lot. God created you to be every bit as spectacular as a mantis shrimp. God has entrusted us with the care of this earth. Let us do our best every day to care for that planet, to be worthy of that gift, and to love the earth and its people that God loves so much. May God bless you and keep you, be kind and gracious to you. May God smile upon you and bring you peace. From wherever you are, serve the Lord, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs>